Hey, welcome back. <laughs> this is the um, Crafting Sparrow podcast. My name is Amanda, and um, boy, do I have <laughs> some things to show you guys. It has been probably more than a month now since my last one. Um, I'm not sure why, but I really haven't been in the mood to record. <laughs> so, um, also, I haven't really had too many projects to a lot of numbers of projects to work on so I kind of wanted to give you guys more content so I waited till the very end of June to do June's episode but anyway if you are new here welcome um, this is where I kind of just talk about all the stuff I've been working on I do knitting and crocheting cross stitching um, sewing anything fiber arts related pretty much um, I hope you enjoy and for those of you who are um, reoccurring viewers welcome back thank you for sticking around um but yeah enough of the intro stuff which I always find kind of awkward <laughs> um let's just get started <laughs> uh, I have my my tea here I just brewed it's a um I love Earl Grey but it, this is specifically <sighs> London Victorian London Fog by Harvey and Sons my friend um, bought me some for Christmas last year, and ever since then, it's like become my favorite Earl Grey tea. <laughs> so I'll be sipping on this. I hope you have a, a nice snack or some warm tea yourself. Um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and get started on my finished objects. The first one being what I'm wearing today, which is the Tin Roof Tea. Um, let me get my notes out. It is by... Yamagara Knits. Um, that's her Instagram handle. And it is a really, really cool construction uh, top. Like, the most unique thing I've ever made, and I'm definitely going to make more. <laughs> hmm. Oh, that's the first sip of this tea <laughs> that I've taken. It's very, it's more warm than I was thinking it would be. Anyway, um, yeah. So this is the Tin Roof Tea. It's really cool. You start out on the sleeves and you do uh, one panel on this side and then you do another panel on this side. Um, and then you pick up stitches on the bottom and it's really cool. So the most interesting thing that uh, about this to me was the grafting of the two pieces together. You do something called Russian Russian grafting, I guess? Russian join? <laughs> I don't know how it is, uh, what the name of it is, but basically it's just you take your two sets of stitches um, on a knitting needle and you take a crochet hook and like loop the hooks into each other, or loop the threads in, loop the loops into each other. <laughs> um, and it does it on the front and it also does it on the back. Um, kind of hard to see from this, <laughs> from this view, but it's just really cool. I just really like it. <laughs> so that's that. Um, sorry, I'm skipping all like the nitty gritty of it. This was made out of some fingering weight yarn bee super wash merino yarn. It's like their, their hand dyed stuff. Um, they were having like a big sale. At Hobby Lobby, which I don't normally buy stuff at, um, but it's the only craft store I have for like 45 minutes. Um, so sometimes I'm forced to go there, but they were having a really big yarn sale and there were those specific yarn skeins were like 75% off. And I've always actually kind of wanted to try it because um, while I love hand dyed skeins of yarn, it's very pricey sometimes. So. It's kind of nice to try some hand dyed yarns that are a bit cheaper, especially since these were on sale. <laughs> so I got three skeins. I didn't know what I was going to do with them. I was thinking I was going to make another Aphrodite uh, bralette, which I'll show you in a minute. I've made one before um, and I loved it, so I wanted to make another one, but turns out that yarn was not right for that pattern. So I had three skeins of yarn I didn't know what to do with. <laughs> um, and I was watching Amy Palco's knitting podcast the meaningful stitch uh and she on her last episode showed this top and talked about how awesome it was just like i did and i was like this is kind of perfect because 
it's the kind of pattern that you can have a lot of different colors and a lot of different amounts and you can just play with the striping because um, you don't have to do what the pattern calls for as far as color changes. Um, so I was able to use three 100 gram skeins of yarn evenly instead of like a color work sweater where you would only need say 20 grams of your contrast color and like a lot of your other main color. So this was just kind of a perfect coincidence that I saw Amy talking about it and having yarn I didn't know what to do with. Uh, so yeah, I used, I think I knit the size, I knit size three and I don't have the names of the this colorway, the three colorways. It's like a, um, I put is like a, a gray steel color with orange and dark blue flecks, and then this was just like different shades of blue, and these two colors kind of complemented each other, and then the pink has shades like flecks of blue, similar to what's in this, and I thought the blue and the pink <laughs> were kind of cute. This is way more color than what I usually uh, pick out for um, my knitted stuff or really anything because <laughs> I usually wear neutrals. Um, but these colors playing together really just made me happy because they remind me of like cotton candy or a pretty sunrise or sunset. So that's pretty cool. Um, I used a 3.25 millimeter needle. I'm pretty sure that's what the pattern called for. I did not swatch, but as I was making it, I realized that I was pretty close to the gauge. So that was a nice added perk to using this yarn for this <laughs> specific top. Um, and I did absolutely no alterations to the pattern. I made it exactly how it um, said to make it. I mean, even down to how much length I added to the bottom, um, I didn't actually measure it out. but. Looking at the photo of the, the model wearing that specific sample, it looked pretty similar to what I did um, as far as the length goes. It's a little bit cropped, but not so cropped that I can't wear it with just jeans um, and I would feel comfortable in it. So it's a pretty good, um, pretty good top. Uh, not having to change or alter anything for my own personal preference is exactly how they called for. I mean, even the arms are nice. There's not too much space there. It it lays down really nicely on my arm. The the faux cable is really pretty. It's just um it's one of those faux cables where you bring a stitch over um a number of stitches and then you add a stitch. So it's pretty um pretty easy to do. You don't have to know how to do cables. Although if you don't know how to do cables, I encourage you to learn because it's really cool to see them be built over time but that's another uh, side topic I guess um, so yeah this is my tin roof tea and I definitely want to make more especially like I said knowing how it's a very like scrappy project as long as it's all fingering weight um, but yeah so that is finished object number one my second finished object is the one I mentioned a second ago it is the Aphrodite bralette by Soapy Knit, and I have been wearing this so much. <laughs> it's just a really, I wouldn't even say a simple bralette because uh, most bralettes that you see on Ravelry are less like shapey than this one, um, but this is a really, really nice one to make. It's not that it's hard, it just has a lot more um, techniques used than like maybe just a simple ribbing texture like the what's it called um ripple bralette by jesse made um which i've made previously and I, you can go back and watch I, I like that pattern but this there's something special about the, sh the shaping on the aphrodite bralette um so the yarn i used was uh, kelsey garner or knitting akabi she has bi-monthly uh, yarn kits that you can buy and this one was the herbology one for April which was for um, chamomile so this was dyed with chamomile and 
it was a DK weight, and DK weight in this specific, this is non-superwash merino wool, was the perfect combination for this, uh, for this pattern. It's, um, it's very soft. It's, once I steam blocked it, it, the yarn bloomed so that it fills in the gaps, like, enough. Um, so I could wear this by itself and feel confident like I'm not like showing too much the straps are very strong I was skeptical seeing how it was only like a three stitch wide I cord I was like mm, I don't know if that's gonna hold me up <laughs> but it does it, it's it's wonderful and the uh, twisted rib it calls for a full twisted rib where you do twisted pearls and twisted knits but I only did the twisted knits just made it quicker. I actually made this twice. Uh, like, I made it to the from the bottom up to um, bind, binding off the back, and one of the cups. And I realized that it was too big, I believe. So I went down. Oh, the size. Let me let me mention the size. Um, yeah. So I put in my notes that I made size medium and tried it on after back bind off, and it was too big. So, I made a size small. <laughs> that was too big. So, I went down to an extra small, knowing it was the smallest um, size that I could go with, hoping that it would work out or else I would have to go down a needle size. And at the time, I didn't want to do that <laughs> um, because I didn't have a smaller needle size. <laughs> I was using my 1.75 millimeter, which... Uh, I think it's still my smallest needle that I have. I, If you go to the end of my acquisition, or end of my episode with the acquisitions, you'll find out that I bought some stuff. Yeah, so now I have a needle size smaller than 1.75, but when I made that, I did not. So I was like, I really hope this extra small works because I literally can't change anything else <laughs> without having to modify the pattern. But it worked out perfectly. Uh, I, think, I think that... Um, I've talked about this before. I think I knit really loosely and I've come to find out that I'm pretty sure that has to do with me being a continental knitter because I've tried doing English style knitting just to see how it felt and I always felt like my stitches were way tighter. I don't know if that's actually how that works. Let me know if you've experienced any like major tension shifts from continental to English and if it was the same way where it's a lot looser in continental because I'd be curious. Um, I won't be like switching to English style. I just wanted to see how it felt in working with yarn that way. It's interesting, but I much prefer continental. So yeah, hey, you got the yarn, you got the size and the needle size. I didn't change anything that the pattern called for. Um, the the cup like it's basically just like increasing and decreasing a specific way in a specific amount um and so it's really easy I, a beginner could do it just following the pattern um i cording is super easy the only thing i'll say is it doesn't tell you exactly where to attach the back of the straps to the back but i don't think they really should have because it could be different for everybody i had to try on the top try and like pin it with stitch markers to where I thought it would be ni nice to put and then I know it adjust it a million times <laughs> and also what's interesting is I actually made one strap smaller than the other um, because if you don't know most boobies are smaller on one side than the other <laughs> so if you didn't know that <laughs> there you go a little bit of anatomy <laughs> fun fact so yeah one actually one strap had to be like five or six rows smaller than the other. But the cool thing is that I could, I modified it and it was easy to modify. Cause you could just try it on and then decide whether you like the height or whatever. Um, but yeah, so that's that. That's really what I got to say. I've been wearing it a lot. Um, it's nice underneath stuff. It's nice just like around the house. I, I've been wearing it just around the house and like throwing a cardigan over it. Um, I definitely want to make more. I just have to find yarn similar to this because this yarn was perfect. <laughs> so that is finished object number two.
Oh, I was gonna show you guys how much yarn I had left over after I finished this. These are the three balls. Um, like I said, they're 100 grams each. I didn't weigh them out, but I could have definitely made it longer if I wanted to. Um, it's kind of nice to like kind of keep in mind for future projects or if you're interested in making one yourself, you could just take three 100 grams and still have yarn left over. Um, but yeah, there they are. I'll probably make some socks out of these. Like um, not only this, take some some sock yarn that has nylon in it for like sturdiness for like the main color and then like sprinkle in some of these colors because they're really fun. I like them. Um, oh, my last finished object has actually been in the uh, camera shot this whole time. His name's Stefan. He's over here hanging out with my Musala socks that I keep handy for emergency cold feet. <laughs> I talked about those in a, a previous episode if you want to know what those are about, but um, this is the focus today. His name is Stefan. He's a little frog, and I love him so much. <laughs> this is a pattern by Claire Garland, or uh, Dot Pebbles is her Instagram account, and she has these things all over Instagram. There's one famous not I say famous um I actually had somebody several people show me a video <laughs> of a frog that somebody made with this pattern and it's super cute um there's one where you sit and watch like the frog in the background as the person's knitting him a sweater and there's one where they're knitting him a friend it's the cutest thing <laughs> um but anyway so I saw that somebody sent me a video of it and I was like you know what I want to make myself one it's a scrappy project I have plenty of different green yarns to pick and choose. Um, so this one, it was actually my second one that I made. I made another one in a like really fluffy, lighter green yarn um, and some old like worsted weight acrylic white and some more buttons similar to this and I named him Odom, he was on my Instagram, which is the Crafting Sparrow. If you are not following, you can go look at that photo, um, and his name was Odom, and you can kind of see what his story is on my Instagram account. Uh, I ended up giving him to a coworker, and she is she has him over there at my um, the ecology lab I work for, and so he's surrounded by a lot of other frogs. <laughs> it made me happy, and I, it was just very fitting that. He was at the ecology lab, so I made myself another one, and he stays in my little crafting office uh, corner. Um, and I definitely plan on making little sweaters for this guy, like seasonal sweaters. One with like a pumpkin on it, or and one like a little Christmas tree. I'm so excited. <laughs> He'll probably be in all the shots of, of my podcast, so you can kind of play a game of I Spy for little Stefan somewhere in my camera. <laughs> I think that could be fun. Um, but Stefan is made out of, the green is Knit Picks um, Alpaca Cloud DK, I think. I think it's called Alpaca Cloud. And yes, Alpaca Cloud DK. And then the white is actually two strands of Knit Picks palette uh, in the color, I think that this is Oyster Heather. I didn't write, actually write it down. I have two shades of creamy colors for Nipix palette, but I th I'm pretty sure that the other one I have was like their cream colorway. This, I think this is Oyster Heather, but it's two strands held together. And the buttons were like a little pack that I was gifted when I first started sewing. There was like a ton of sizes of buttons and I just picked out two of the smaller ones. And I actually used two bit bigger buttons for the other frog I made. It's kind of nice to have buttons of <laughs> different sizes around to make little stuffed animals. I think buttons are so cute as like a stuffed animal eye. <laughs> um, but this is little Stefan. He's cute. It was a really quick project too. Um, and oh, I, you know, I... <laughs> I was really scared of making a knitted like stuffed toy before making this. Like I've only thing I've ever made as far as like stuffed toys is crochet. 
like amigurumis and uh, I've made quite a few of those but for some reason I was terrified of making a knitted amigurumi <laughs> uh, but this was so easy uh, Claire does a really good job of writing everything out showing pictures that you know so you know you're on the right track uh, and it's it's really simple techniques like you would you would look at this and maybe think that you know too much shaping for my skill set or whatever but I think that you anybody could do it honestly and it's just such a cute little thing to be able to say that you made uh, but yep that is the fun I don't think he's gonna stay up there come on there he it, okay he's good <laughs> I think that's all my finished objects um, I only have two whips one of them you've seen well, let me get it out from my bag it is the a flutter poncho that I'm knitting for my grandma it's grown quite a bit since the last time you guys have seen it I'm almost done. There's like three sections to it and I'm on, I'm over halfway done with the third section. So I'm really close to being finished and it is beautiful. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, and also I feel like I should mention, cause I didn't say it. I just realized I made it with the frog with a, a 2.5 millimeter needle. Yeah. 2.5 millimeter needle. Um, but anyway, back to the A flutter poncho. <laughs> it's so cute. Um, I'm on my third skein of the Nipix Stroll Gradient. And the pattern called for 300 grams, and I think it's actually going to be accurate. I was really scared that I would need more, but I think that this will last me through the last couple of rows with uh, short rows that I need it for so you know if you wanted to make your own 300 grams is pretty accurate don't be scared that you're gonna run out and order more yarn just in case because <laughs> this was being discontinued and I was kind of scared that I wasn't gonna have enough um, and it also calls for 300 roughly 300 grams of the main color which again I would agree with um, I'm pretty sure that these are Um, huh. I thought it said 300 grams. Maybe it didn't. But I'm on my third one of this. So, 150-ish. I may end up using another one, but I have plenty of these. So, um, if you've been watching for a while, you know the lore of this, <laughs> this yarn. It's had quite a few purposes. Um, <laughs> so, it's a nitpick stroll rabbit heather. And that I'm on my third one, and I I, th I don't think I'll need another one, but um, I'll just quickly go over the needle size. It's one size, so there's no specific sizing, but I am using a 3.5 millimeter needle, and they're both knit pick stroll, like I said, which is a fingering white yarn. Um, but yeah, I this this pattern has been really nice for me practicing German short rows, which uses a uh, double stitch. Um, and if you don't know what that is, basically to create short rows, which is how each of these little pods are made, you you have to turn your work um, when you get to the end of a, a, a short row, and to prevent like gaps and stuff, you slip a stitch back from your um, left needle to your right needle with the yarn in front and then you bring that yarn over your right needle so it looks like two loops have been formed and that's why they call it a double stitch um, and I've done it before in projects but it was still kind of like I was wary when I was doing it because so it was kind of new to me still um, but once I got like a couple of these things down, once I got to probably like right here, I would, I'm a professional in double stitch now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like second nature to me at this point. So, you know, once you've done 
so many double stitches. <laughs> um, you get very confident in it. And it's been nice because the frog and the pattern that I'm about to show you now uh, after this Aphrodite or after the A Flutter Poncho, I'll show you my next whip. Um, it also has some double stitches in it. Uh, I feel like there's been other things that I've made recently that had double stitches in it. Uh, maybe not. Did the tin roof have? Oh yeah, the tin, their tin roof did have double stitches. This takes short rows, the sleeve cap is what it's called. Um, so yeah, I feel like I, this has been really good practice for my future projects after it. Um, but I digress. Grandma, I hope you like it, by the way. It's almost done. You'll probably get it before fall time. <laughs> uh, I just love it so much. I can't wait to bind off. I think I'm going to do an i -core bind off. I don't know if that's what it calls for. Um, but I think I'm going to do that anyway. And it's just going to be really clean on the bottom and... I can't wait to see just how like long and comfortable of a poncho it is on. I, I mean, I can't, it's, the cord is too small. Like the cord makes it, doesn't make it look like it's that wide at the bottom, but um, it's going to be wide, but that's supposed to be, it's supposed to be wide. So it'll be, it'll be great. Um, I just can't wait to try it on is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I say a thousand things to cover like, one sentence. <laughs> uh, but that's my eight flutter poncho progress. And then my last work in progress is in my bag I made. My um, bucket bag. And it is a moonset tee by Ozetta. I just cast it on last night, so there's not much. <laughs> um, I did the short row shaping, which is what I was talking about, included the double stitches. I did that, I finished that, and now I I think I'm going to be casting on stitches for like the back shoulders. I don't know. You, you, they say you're supposed to like read ahead in the pattern so you know what to expect. I didn't do that. I just started at the top. Um, but I'm making this out of, it's Knitting for Olive. It is their pure silk uh, yarn. It's a fingering weight yarn, 250 meters for 50 grams. And I bought four of them. That should be enough. I followed the pattern. It's four size um, medium, which is the, the third size. And it says I only need four skeins of that. This is the yarn it called for, too, uh, which I rarely do. Uh, if you've noticed, I tend to just kind of hope. I go for, like, the yarn weight that it calls for <laughs> and then hope that it works. It's probably just a terrible idea. Don't follow my actions. But it's worked out pretty fine for me so far. But anyway... Um, so yeah, I got four of these, and then I'm knitting it in, I'm knitting it in a 2.5 millimeter, which is smaller than the recommended. The recommended is a 3.25 millimeter. Um, so I did a small gauge swatch. I did a lazy gauge swatch where you just check to make sure that the stitch count is four inches, and then you knit about two inches. <laughs> And then see if you get <laughs> half of the row count, right? Um, but anyway, the stitch count was off for the 3.25 millimeters. So I switched to 2.5 and I get pretty much exactly 4 inches with, um, I think it's 26 stitches for 4 inches. Um, but my row count is a bit off. I realize that that's probably not great, but it's not necessarily super important. The important thing to me is that I liked the fabric. Um, I spent a lot of time, you know, feeling it, seeing how see-through or airy it was, um, seeing how opaque it was on my hand, um, and the 2.5 millimeters um, created a fabric that I was really happy with, so um, I stuck with those. 
and um, I think it's going great now. I love this pure silk yarn. Um, this is actually my first time getting knit of, knitting for Olive yarn. I've seen a lot of people using it. They are a great company. Um, the only downside is they're all the way in uh, Copenhagen, so uh, it took a little while to get to me, uh, but that's okay. I have plenty of other projects to work on um, while I was waiting, and um, it's totally worth it. It's I can see why people like it. Um, this is supposed to be a summery top, and I think it's going to work great living in South Carolina. We just had a heat wave uh, with like 106 or 103, 104, whatever temperature uh, Fahrenheit during the day for like two weeks straight. And although that's kind of rare, it's not that much different than what we usually experience in the summer. It's usually like high 90s. <laughs> so something like this is going to be essential in my wardrobe um, of hand knits and yeah I was kept seeing all these videos on YouTube people recommending you know all these free summer patterns or um, things that you can knit in the summer and it just really got me inspired to make my own last year the only summer thing I made with cotton linen was the Willa tea I don't I'll put it at the bottom of the screen here um, who that was by and I don't remember if I ever I don't remember when I made that and if I was doing podcasts yet so maybe I haven't shown it to you maybe I have if I haven't maybe I'll show it to you next time <laughs> I made it out of Knit Picks's Lindy chain um, which is like I said a cotton linen yarn um, so that was the only thing that I made last year that was really like a summer knit. Um, so, you know, this year I'm just going all out. I bought this um, and I'm about to go into my future plans slash acquisitions. Um, and you're about to see how much yarn I bought for my summer knits coming up. <laughs> um, let's just go ahead and jump into that because that's all I really have to say about this. I'm really excited for it. Uh, I've had my eye on the Moonset tee for a very long time, um, so I'm happy to finally be able to do it. But, yep. So that was my last work in progress. Um, I don't normally have so many acquisitions to show you. I'm very much a person that buys like one project worth of yarn at a time, um, but that is not the case this time. <laughs> Uh, I kind of went a little bit crazy for my standards. Uh, I went on Hobby's website and found some yarn that um, spoke to me. It's linen cotton yarn. 50% um, linen, 50% cotton. It's BC Garn Alino. Which also shipped from Copenhagen. <laughs> So I had a lot of shipping time to sit and wait and think about the yarn that I just bought. Um, I bought this yarn specifically for the Cosmos tea uh, by... Um, her Ravelry name was Knit Lig, and again, I'll have the names on the screen. And everything is in the description box below, what, what I'm going to mention, um, what you see me show you. It's all going to be down there, so... Um, but that her her actual name is Tanja Nielsen, and I haven't seen anybody talk about this pattern yet, and it is so beautiful. Um, it's like a basic raglan tee, but there's this really pretty detail. It's like a a V shaped detail right here of lace work. Um, I can show you guys on my phone. Hopefully it'll pick up. The lighting won't be too bad. And it just surprised me that I hadn't seen anybody talk about this pattern before. Let me pull it up. And then not only is the lace pattern like super pretty, but it has this really nice detail where the, um, it has like a pico detail on the collar and the cuffs. Mm, is it gonna show it? Is it gonna behave? Maybe that photo's not good. That's a little bit better. 
that's the detail I was talking about. It's like a very lacy detail. And then you can even kind of see the Pico I was talking about, the Pico um, detail at the top. It's so pretty. And that's what I'm gonna make out of the Alino yarn. It's the colorway I picked out is, um, I don't even know if it has a colorway. It just says color 27, but it's a very beige color. Um, almost like a sandy beige. And it also has a bit of like light and darkness to it. It's getting to be evening time now. So my lighting, my natural lighting is not really there. I say that this is almost accurate. You can kind of see the dark and dark and dark and lightness of the yarn in this. Um, I guess you would call that marling. I don't know. This is a it's showing up like just a bit more green than it actually is. Um, I actually never told you guys what colorway this. I'm making my moonset tea out of the colorway lamb's ears. Which, the reason why my mind just went back to that is because I said this was different than the way it looks. Um, I bought this yarn thinking it was a bit of a sage color. And it is not. It is a very, like, silvery color. But I actually ended up liking it better because it almost reminds me of, like, the silveriness of the moonlight that glows on a full moon or something. That's just, that's just my D&D um, dramatic brain coming out a little bit. <laughs> her hair was the color of moonlight in the in the nighttime. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah. So obviously, there's always a chance that your yarn is not going to turn out the same color um, that you're expecting it by looking at it online. Um, and that was the case for that color from knitting from uh, knitting for Olive. But that's okay because I ended up liking what I got better than what I expected. So I guess that's a scenario where. Uh, that's the scenario people hope to experience, <laughs> but not always experience. Um, so that was that acquisition, um, the Cosmos tea with uh, BC Garn Alino. And my next one was the other yarn I got from Knitting for Olive, and this is their Cotton Merino in the colorway Slate, which is just a black color. This is going to be a camisole number no. five by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I saw um, um, High Fiber Knits' podcast. I saw her do this uh, camisole, and it's just stunning. That's all I have to say. It is so beautiful. And I don't have a camisole yet, and I think it would be really nice with high-waisted skirt or layering, you know, all the typical stuff people look for with, um, like, camisole or tank top stuff. I think it's going to be very classy looking. Uh, especially in this color, it'll be really nice. Uh, I'm excited about that. And I'm probably going to cast this on after my Moonset tea. I don't know. I haven't decided which one I'm doing first. The Cosmo tea or the um, Camisole number five. But either way, I am excited. <laughs> um, although I need to remind myself to slow down <laughs> because... This is what happens when I have a lot of yarn to go through. I feel very rushed in my projects because I see the yarn on my shelf and I want to consume it all now that I have it. Um, so it's kind of reassured my buying habits to not do that, <laughs> not to buy a lot of yarn at once. Um, that being said, I have more yarn to show you. <laughs> Um, this is the Mythical Creatures yarn by uh, Kelsey Garner or Knitting Nakabi, and it's so good. <laughs> I had to get Mythical Creatures Club instead of Herbology Club this month because, um, if you don't know, I have a character in the D&D campaign I'm in now who is a uh, water genasi, so Basically, I saw that this yarn was going to be merfolk related, and I had to, out of loyalty for Silda of my water genasi, I had to buy it instead of the Herbology Club. <laughs> and I'm glad I did. Um, 
it, which is actually funny because she named the colorway Nicodranas, and I didn't know what that was, and I looked it up, and she named it after uh, a place in Critical Role, which is a D and D like thing. <laughs> um, so it was actually kind of cool. I mean, I guess it wasn't too far fetched that something called mythical creatures would be based on Dungeons and Dragon. Um, but it's really pretty. It's made out of marigolds and indigo, and it has like fades from green to blue, and it even has yellows in the middle here. And I got really excited when I opened it because not only was it different than I expected, I expected it to just be different shades of blue, um, which I would have been happy with, but the green in it, oh my god. My favorite colors have always been blue and green, and so both of them being in it, <laughs> it's perfect. But the reason why it made me extra excited is because, um, this is my dice bag, by the way. I think I showed you it before, um, but... The reason why it made me extra excited is because it actually really matches my die set that I have already. Um, I have, oh, it's, so it makes sense that it matches because I bought these specifically to match Sildoth. <laughs> um, so they have like blues and um, like a opalescent look to them. Sorry, I forget. I got a new camera lens, so I have to like remember that it's really bad about on like getting things blurry if they're too close or too far away um but they have the yellow tinge the numbers are in like a gold a yellowy gold and they have the blues and green colors and they match the yarn like look at that that's just if that doesn't make you happy then i don't know what will <laughs> um i don't know what i'm gonna make with this yet i was actually talking to kelsey about this um <laughs> I usually have a plan for things that I buy, but I just have so many projects already planned that I'm just gonna admire this on my shelf. Like, it, that's how it's gonna make me happy until I figure something out for it. Um, which is something that has n barely ever happened. It just like, I always hear about um, knitters buying yarn and then saying, I can't wait to find the special project to use this for, and now I get it. <laughs> I cannot wait to find a special project to use this with. Uh, but I think what it's probably going to end up going in is a colorwork sweater where this is the contrast color. Um, I have so many summer knits planned, I don't really want to make more than what I've got planned. So uh, once I finish the Cosmos tee, the Moonset tee, and the Camisole number 5, I'm going to want to knit sweaters again. <laughs> so I think this will probably go in my first sweater for the fall slash winter season. So stand by for this yarn. Uh, that's all the yarn that I have, but I do have a couple more acquisitions that um, one of them is still knitting related. The other one is actually sewing related, but we'll go into the knitting one first. I mentioned before that I didn't particularly enjoy my smaller needle. I have I have Haya Haya Sharps uh, smaller metal needles, um, but they are set circular needles. They are not interchangeable. I don't like that. <laughs> They're great for socks, but if you haven't noticed already or are new, I'm not really a sock knitter. I have made, I can count on, the, on my hands how many socks that I've made, um, and that's probably not going to change. I'm, they're not a thing I go to. So, I don't really use my high high sharps that much, um, but I still really wanted smaller needles than my Takumi Clovers had. Um, I have Takumi Clover interchangeable needle set from 3.25 all the way up to a six millimeter, and they have they have served me well, but I have increasingly been knitting smaller like fingering weight uh, projects that require smaller needles than 3.25 to meet gauge um, and also knowing that I am a loose knitter it was just a trend where I was like I don't have the right needle size for this um, and I don't want to use set circular needles uh, I'm okay with magic loop if I have to but not for a whole sweater or shirt or whatever um, so 
All that just to say that I bought a interchangeable Chai Gu needle set for sizes 1.5 millimeter up to 2.5 millimeter. And these things are amazing. <laughs> um, they came in this really cute little pouch that I'm using as a notions pouch now. Um, it's like a mesh thing with a front pocket that I'm keeping some different size cables for the projects that I'm working on now. And everything else basically I'm keeping in the main pocket from stitch markers to darning needles to anything, scissors, anything that you would need on the go, um, they fit in this thing perfectly. So I was really happy. I didn't think that I was going to use it, but now I use it for all my notions. <laughs> um, but the main thing is the needles, obviously, and it also came with their red lace cables, which everybody harps on for a good reason. They are wonderful cables. They, they don't have any memory to shaping like my Takumi Clovers. I've learned to deal with it, but I will say it is annoying. When you coil them for, up for storage, they keep that, that coiled up bounciness and it gets twisty and everything. These red lace ones don't do that at all. Um, put these back. Um, so yeah, this was a wonderful buy. And honestly, I think they were only like in the 80, 80 something dollars on Amazon and you get one, two, three, four, five sets of needles and um, four different four different cables. Two of them are the eight inch, you get a 14 inch and a 22 inch. So that's everything I need to make a sweater or a shirt or whatever. And it came with um, uh, this is a little pouch here. It came with something to put on the ends of the cables in case you want to knit straight. It came with stitch markers. It came with those little pins that you can stick in the um, junction from the needle to the cable and so you can get it twisted really tightly. And it came with one of these little things that you can grip the needle with. And most importantly, it came with cable connectors, <laughs> which is a lifesaver if you're making a big garment because you're like, crap, I need to try this on. You can just add cables to it without having to take all your stitches off. It's wonderful. So that set came with all of this stuff. Um, and I mean, I haven't really been shopping around for needles a bunch, but I know at least with my Takumi Clover interchangeables, you have to buy everything separate, like even the cable and um, cable connectors. So highly recommend those. Um, it's been a treat to work with. I'm working with the 2.5 on my Moonset tee, and I love them. I like the weight of the metal. I like the, the like I said, the cables are really nice. Um, and if you know me, I, I've always said that I prefer bamboo, my bamboo needles. But I realize now it's just because I didn't like the metal ones that I had. Um, these, like I said, they're really heavy, and I, I didn't know that I would hold so much value in a weighted needle, but apparently I do. So, whew, the last thing I have to talk about, I guess this is what happens, with almost 50 minutes recording, this is what happens when you save everything for like a month and a half of crafty stuff. Um, this is cool though. I went thrifting with my friend, Chels, and we went... Sorry, I dropped the ball yarn. We went thrifting um, at a Goodwill and I found this. It's not perfect, it's a little bit broken, <laughs> but it's a sewing basket. I'm not a huge fan of the bright blue inside, but that did not stop me from buying it for a whopping $6 at Goodwill. It has a cushion, a little thingy here, you can put your needles in. Um, when you're not using them and it's a very large basket for the amount of sewing stuff I have on hand now as a beginner sewer. It fits everything. It fits all my um, fabric scraps that I have right now and um, patterns or just like my notions and stuff. It all fits in here and it looks a lot better on my shelf in this basket than just throwing all of the stuff I just talked about onto my, onto my um, shelf here that I have a lot of crafting stuff in. And 
I don't know. It's just so cute. It makes me happy. I like the color of like this one dark blue stripe. And I thought about, since this is almost breaking, I thought about like winding some yarn that I like, like the look of around it since it's not completely broken yet. Just to like reinforce it. But that was the last thing I bought. <clears throat> um, so that's that. Oh, I am winded. I am tired. <laughs> mm. And my tea has gone cold. So I think that is a sign to wrap it up here. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I, like I said, I have an Instagram. If you want to see more of what I'm doing in between podcast episodes, you can follow me there at the crafting sparrow. Um, I also do have a Ravelry, but I really just use it to buy patterns, um, or just like scope out projects and what other people have done with certain patterns, but you can add me on there if you want. Um, I think I'm a crafting sparrow on there because of the character limit on the name. Um, and yeah, give me a follow on those. Leave a comment down below. What have you guys been making? Did you, did you make anything while you watched this? Um, how has your summer been going? <laughs> have you had deathly hot weather like we have here in South Carolina? Uh, if you have, I'm deeply, deeply sorry. <laughs> it sucks. Um, but yeah, just leave a comment, subscribe if you want, um, leave a like if you liked it, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye! <laughs>